Konnichiwa, Samu san. Um, welcome back. Um, I want to talk a little bit. You have a quality background. You got educated at Osaka University, um, financial services before becoming Saibozu's CFO, and now you're the CEO of Kinton and Saibozu USA, if I'm not mistaken. Can you share with us how your career has evolved? And is this what you always wanted to be when you grew up? Okay. Yep. Uh, I actually never had a specific dream of what I wanted to do, but uh, I wanted to have a different path from uh, everyone else. Uh, I graduated from Osaka University of Foreign Studies, um, focus on the, uh, with focus on the Persian cultures. After graduating, I wanted to work for the global trading company uh, where I would have a chance to work overseas. After everything, though, uh, though I decided to work uh, work for the industry industry the other bank of Japan. That's called IBJ. Mm -hmm. uh, the real reason um, I chose to work there is because I'm actually not a typical banker. <laughs> so I'm, That's I'm good more news. like a salesperson uh, or something. But but uh, uh, I chose. Uh, I chose banking because there are few people like me there. So I always want to be different because uh, there is value in people that think differently. Right. I think it is important to surround yourself with uh, uh, a different pers uh, perspective. And also, I wanted to increase my value to the company by being different from the usual people they had hired before. So in the end, I think I was a little too different from the culture of the bank. So it took it eight, eight years <laughs> to get know. <laughs> and uh, uh, after, uh, after, oh uh, no! In in the end, uh, I think I was a little too different from the cu uh, culture of the bank. Mm -hmm. Took uh, eighty years to uh, to get know. They are risk averse, uh, uh, averse by nature, which is good in banking, but not as good when it comes to innovating and uh, changing the way things work. Right. You need cultural chemistry in order to uh, really love your work. And after working at the IBJ, uh, I moved to Cyber Zoo, where uh, I have been working for 16 years in in charge of uh, all administration. So even though my title at the time was CFO, I built the uh, training program and was I was uh, uh, to, uh, built was uh, responsible. For, I was responsible for our HO uh, also. Uh, I interviewed uh, almost all of the uh, current members of Cybos Inc., which is now about the 600 people globally. Wow. But, uh, but I've actually interviewed uh, thousands, thousands of uh, candidates over the year. Over time, seeing people come and go, you start learning about uh, what is what uh, what what it takes to build a strong team. So that's what we built in Cyber Zoo. Oh, and uh, when it uh, came time to take on the uh, U.S. market, uh, which is the largest IT market in the world, we decided that we needed to create a team uh, outside of Japan. Uh, we need to build a strong team globally uh, with uh, with a vision that doesn't stop at Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to have a global company, you need team teams of different cultures. That what uh, that what I think. Let, let me ask you a question. You know, when our firm, mm -hmm. you know, we're an executive search firm. We concentrate on attracting and keeping the right fit people for our clients. Uh, I noticed you quoted it. You were quoted as saying, "Our lifestyles are changing, but the way we manage our business businesses is stuck in the same place." 
Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that in terms of culture and how you've seen it impact employee performance and wellness and, and everything with the business? Okay. Yeah. From a management perspective, we have the opportunity for more democratic teamwork where uh, each person has a voice. Um, at our company, we strive uh, every day to be more open-minded and more open about the, about uh, information. In a lot of companies today, only the uh, ex uh, executive have uh, all important information and uh, they share a little bit with their employee hired uh, out here and there. But our teamwork is not about the leader having uh, all the information because we realize that information sharing is valuable. Right. The, the way um, the way our team uh, team works globally is that we help each other across culture, across uh, national lines. Uh, I don't want to uh, push our model of uh, teamwork, but a lot of companies around the world, and especially in the U.S., uh, pretty much focus on the st uh, stockholders and uh, make employees. Uh, they make employees com uh, compete with. Uh, within the company to stay uh, relevant. Many people think that work must be that way. They think that is the only way, but it's not. Uh, people are uh, becoming really tired of, uh, of that work style, I think. So. All the time, you have uh, to compete for uh, being evaluate, evaluated. Uh, what we Learned that uh, is that people really want want a uh, want a uh, uh, horizontal horizontal model instead of more uh, hierarchy. Right. But right now it's still a challenge even for our own company because a lot of members came from very traditional companies. Their thinking is still traditional, but we do training it training session to help overcome uh, these kind of mindsets. Yep. Um, yeah, we, we see that a lot with companies we work with too. The, the only way you can attract the, the really good people is if they see that you really do care about them. Mm -hmm. And, and then it's not, it's, it's, you know, money's always important, but it's never the number one factor. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. And, you know, we've worked with a lot of, a lot of global companies also. And one thing, Maybe you can comment on this. One thing I find that um, that supports them to continue and have consistent, what we call winning seasons, like a sports team have winning seasons, is they have a why. They have a heart and soul vision of why they are doing the business. Can you give us a sense of what your why or your vision is for Kintone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my... My objective is to build a global team, and not just in the business sense. Uh, I want to put together a team with with the the idea that we are uh, similar at the deep level, and uh, it is our differences that make uh, make us a uh, stronger, smarter team uh, when we work together. Uh, sure, we could have a broader team um, of people from our office in Japan uh, over to the U.S., but uh, but then we would have missed the opportunity to work people who think differently. If uh, if proud of our oh no 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 what no. Uh, I'm proud of my team in the U.S. and I'm proud of the, uh, that we are building a uh, strong global team in China and Vietnam, Vietnam as well. Yeah, that's great. And you probably find that by having people like that, they help you attract other mm -hmm. good people to the company, correct? Yep, right. The, um, let me ask you one other question in this part. You know, Kintone, you're a leader in a very fast-growing, you know, SaaS or what they call groupware industry. 
There's a, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of big players that are competing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of local and regional players that are competing. How do you or can you describe how you meet those challenges? How you mm -hmm. capture the opportunities for your business as well as for your clients? Okay, sure. To meet the challenges of uh, such competitive IT market, we will listening close, listen closely to our customers. Um, but I think every company says they do that. But uh, it's not a many company can do that. But right. we really have to. So right now we are at the uh, forefront, uh, forefront of a massive movement from slow traditional IT to fast agile, easy to build solutions. Mm -hmm. Naturally, well, we listen to th uh, thought leaders like Gertner and uh, Forrester, uh, but but by the time uh, Gertner and Forrester write about these concepts, there are uh, already dozens of uh, players in the market. For us to really be uh, innovative, we have to uh, constantly be, by uh, constantly be trying uh, new things and uh, interacting with with our customers to find uh, find out uh, what they need. We need to learn the constantly and uh, not be discouraged. Our approach isn't always the uh, easiest, but uh, because we are ahead of the game, it allows us to work with the most innovative, most successful companies in the world. Yep. Very smart, thanks. Um... Let me ask you a couple of personal questions so we can get to know you a little bit better. Not yep. too not too personal, but a little personal. <laughs> um, do you have a pet? Yeah, I have a crazy little dog named the Rata. <laughs> this that name came from the uh, my daughter loves rabbit. My son uh, loves a turtle, so Rata. <laughs> He's a miniature tax expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, do you have a favorite activity or sport you like to do? Uh, yeah, I play tennis and baseball and the golf on the uh, weekend. So I love to play sports. Uh, we have a uh, we have a great weather uh, to play sports here, just so I really enjoy enjoying uh, living in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, we we um we compare sports a lot to business. There's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, is there a favorite movie that you have or TV show or something like that? No, not a, it's not a many TV shows uh, I'm watching here. No. Yeah. Maybe I, I, um, I see a lot of movie in the uh, airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw, I was in Vienna the other week. I saw three movies in a row. I couldn't sleep. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, how about favorite music and favorite food? Oh, um, my favorite, oh, my favorite music, I, I, I listen to all kinds of music, but, uh, but right now, it's current days, uh, it's jazz, uh, it's getting better, <laughs> jazz, maybe it's uh, getting older. <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, I know the and, feeling. Uh, the food is, um, I, I love uh, the Mexican food. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's a spicy food. It yeah, is. I love that. Good for you. Well, uh, Tomo Arigato, and we'll continue on in a minute. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome.